This board here is a 26-3134A Coco 2 board. This board um, has the single ROM chip that will hold Color Basic and Extended Color Basic. It has uh, the RAM in just you know, these two packages here with a port here where you can add additional RAM. The board is a slightly smaller board uh, than the 26, uh, you know, the older, you know, vertical can ones. And it's one of the ones that I really wanted to recreate. So um, I've shown a couple of videos already, you know, um, kind of some of the things that I've been doing to recreate the board. And in this one, I wanted to show, you know, one of the ways that I confirm that the connections are good. So how did I start doing this? Well, first I went to the Color Computer Archive and I downloaded the schematic for this board. You see it up here. Okay, this is the Color <coughs> Computer 2 Schematic Rev A, Tandy PDF. Um, and then I basically started transcribing, you know, everything you see on here. Okay. Into this. Okay. Once I had the schematic, I selected footprints for each component that's on here. And eventually, you know, I drew up an outline for the board and came up with this. And it's pretty close. I've printed it. I've printed out a scale version of this just on paper and laid this board on top of it and pretty much everything lines up. Um, and I think it's going to work. Now, what I do need to confirm is that all the little connections that you saw in there are good. And so one of the things that I do is, for example, let's say I want to make sure that this pin here, right, is connected to where it needs to be connected. I can highlight that pin or that net. And all the nets that are connected to it um, show up. So these two there show up. Now I have my multimeter on. And let me see if it'll come out here. All right. So you can hear, I have it in continuity mode. Okay, and then I've connected a jumper to it. All right, and in this case, it isn't really necessary, but it helps. And so what I'll do is I'll, you know, you can see down here, I've connected to it. And so I should be able to go to the second pin down and I'll get continuity. So that works. Let's look at a little one that's a little bit more complicated. Okay. So one, a couple of things that I do want to check on here because I just couldn't find it on the schematic. So I had to buzz it out is the memory port. I want to make sure that those connections are correct. So I can go here, highlight that one. And then that's ground, I believe. So let's confirm that that is ground. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna buzz all of them out, but you know, I'll confirm some of them. Okay, I've already, I've already installed some he uh, pin header there. Okay, and so I can go uh, to this here. I should. And it works. Let's go to the next one. Okay. So then I move it down. Right, and then I'll go over to the fourth one down over here. So one, two, three, four. Indeed, the other one, the fifth one down from over here. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, and the fourth one over here. One, two, three, four, five. I'm sorry, fourth. Those are good. And let's do one more, just for good measure. Okay. All right, and so the fourth one down over here, all right, should be one, two, three, four. You heard it, it beeped, okay? And then one, two, three, four, the fifth one up from down here, 
one, two, three, four, five. Right, and then the second one down here. Well, let's hear it again. And then basically, I've already confirmed a lot of stuff on this side of the board. And I still need to confirm the rest of the stuff on this side. And so that's what I plan on doing for the next couple hours, maybe tonight or tomorrow. But I did want to show, you know, how it was that I was confirming these connections. Now, that doesn't mean everything's going to work. Um, what this shows is what the nets that I've created on the board, right? And all I can do is make sure that those nets exist on the real board, right? But if I'm missing a connection, right? I won't know. I just, I'll know that there isn't a short, but I won't know if there's an open circuit, um, you know, which is, it's okay. You know, that's better than having a short or a wrong connection, but that can still be a problem. And it, that is something that happened to me when I was putting together the Coco 3 board. Um, there was a missing connection, which, you know, I caught and fixed. But, you know, just to show that nothing is perfect, but there are some things that you can do to help double check. And, um, yeah, this is coming out really cool. So far, it looks good. Um, like you saw earlier, I was able to, you know, copy the original path of the traces. And let me see, let me turn them on. And... The copper pour isn't exact, and I'm okay with that. So let's actually, let's remove that so you can see what it looks like. Now these are unconnected traces, and that's because uh, these connect to the copper pour, but I'll get rid of those. Um, sorry. So they're not in the way. But as you can see, it's pretty close. Let's get rid of the bottom so we can just see the top traces. And you see, you know, this bundle of traces. You know, it looks like that bundle of traces. Uh, this bundle here looks like that bundle there. This bundle, this bundle. Now, I did have to guess, you know, how they were routed under the chips because I was not going to remove the chips for that. But I'm pretty sure they're going to be very close to what I'm seeing here. The bottom of the board. Well, I guess I could turn it around here now that I think about it. Let's see. Will that come out? Yeah. It's pretty good. Good enough. Let's look at the bottom of the board. Let me uh, flip the board view so it matches. And, um, you know, yeah, you see that these traces here, you know, look like these. These here. Look like these, these over here, look like these, and so on and so forth. So what was good about copying the original um, tracks was that it, had, it served as a really good aid to make sure that things were connected correctly. And I did find one mistake that I had made. Now there is one difference on this board that you'll see over here. Okay, and that is this chip here. That chip was not on the board originally. It was an, an add-on after the fact. And it's this floating chip here that was piggybacked over here. So, obviously, this was intended to have that chip. Please excuse the dog that's barking. We are dog sitting. Um, and I wasn't going to design a board and then just have to piggyback a chip on it afterwards. So I made a little space for it there. So I rendered it in 3D so you could see what it looks like compared to the original board. And you'll see that it's pretty close. It's not too far off. There will be differences, obviously. Uh, the glaring one is the chip here that I talked about earlier. Um, this connector is different. I mean, it mates the same with the cartridge, but the footprint itself is different. This one just 
I can't find one like this one. This is the closest thing I could find. Um, but yeah, pretty much everything is in the same place, uh, specifically the mounting holes. Those line up. And, you know, the power button, the channel select switch, IO ports, and the reset switch line up. Um, and, uh, and then all of these other chips, they're very, very, very close. So, yeah. And there you go. This is what it will look like. Not too bad. Uh, let's look at the bottom. Yeah, you know, it's close. Like I said earlier, the copper pores are different and I'm okay with that. All these traces though are pretty much spot on. Well, there's the update.